Assalamualaikum everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you all are doing well. Today in this video, we will be discussing the major contributions of uh, the well-known prominent early sociologists that are August Comte, Herbert Spencer, Karl Marx, Emil Durkheim and Max Weber. So let's start off with August Comte. The title founder of sociology usually goes to the French philosopher August Comte. He is known as the founder of sociology. Comte was a somewhat eccentric person. He claimed to practice mental hygiene. Uh, this means that he refused to read anyone else's books, but was one of the most original thinkers of his time. It was he who coined the term sociology and who argued in 1838 that the methods of science should be applied to the study of society. Comte basically established two specific problems for sociological investigation. Number one, social statics and number two, social dynamics. So what is meant by social statics? Social statics refer to the problem of order and stability. How and why do societies hold together and endure? This is what social statics is. Social dynamics refer to the problem of social change what makes societies change and what shapes the nature and direction of the changes. Comte was so confident that the scientific method would unlock the secrets of society that he came to regard sociologists as a priesthood of humanity. Experts who would not only explain social events but would also guide the society in the direction of greater progress. Although later sociologists have generally had more modest ambitions, they have continued to wrestle with the problems of social order and social change. Now let's discuss Herbert Spencer, who is another important 19th century figure. He devised a theory to explain the problems of social order and change. Spencer compared human societies to living organisms. The parts of an individual, such as the lungs and the heart, are interdependent and they contribute to the survival of the total organism. Similarly, Spencer argued that the various parts of society such as the state and economy are also interdependent and they work to ensure the stability and survival of the entire system. This theory took care of the problem of order. To explain change, Spencer pushed his analogy even further, applying Darwin's theory of evolution to human societies. Spencer argued that humans gradually evolve from the forms found in the primitive societies of the world to the more complex forms found in the industrializing societies of his own time. Uh, Spencer believed that evolution means progress and he strongly opposed attempts of uh, social reform on the grounds that social reformers basically interfere with a natural evolutionary process. Spencer's ideas seem rather strange today, but they remain influential in a very modified form. Many sociologists still see society as a more or less harmonious system whose various parts contribute to overall stability. Many also believe that there has been a general tendency for societies to move from the simple to the complex, although those sociologists don't equate this evolution with progress towards something better. Okay, so now let's discuss Karl Marx. Uh, we will be discussing Karl Marx in a very short summarized manner in order to know who Karl Marx is and what are his works. Although uh, Karl Marx's uh, contributions to sociology are immense and of uh, paramount significance, um, they, they are quite lengthy as well. The books that he wrote, the contributions that he made uh, are quite complex and lengthy. But we will be discussing Karl Marx in a very short and summarized manner just in order to know who he is and what did he do. Uh, the third and most important of the 19th century social thinkers was Karl Marx. Marx was born in Germany, but after being expelled from various countries for his revolutionary activities, Karl Marx eventually settled in England. He wrote brilliantly on subjects broad and diverse as philosophy, economics, political science and history. He did not think of himself as a sociologist, but his work is so rich in sociological insights that he is now regarded as one of the most profound and original social thinkers. His influence has been immense. Millions of people accept his theories with almost religious fervor. And modern socialist and communist movements owe their inspiration directly to him. 
Now let's discuss Emile Durkheim. The French sociologist Emile Durkheim has strongly influenced the discipline. Durkheim dealt with the problem of social order. He argued that societies are held together by the shared beliefs and values of their members, especially as these are expressed in religious doctrine and ritual. Like Herbert Spencer, Emile Durkheim wanted to establish how the various parts of society contribute to the maintenance of the whole. His method was to ask what function or positive consequence for the social system a given element has which is an approach that has been highly influential in modern American sociology. Durkheim also made the first real breakthrough in sociological research with his painstaking statistical study of suicide in various population groups. He was able to show that suicide rates vary consistently from one group to another, proving that the act of suicide is influenced by social forces and it is not simply the individual matter that it might appear to be. The fifth and final sociologist which we will be highlighting in this video is Max Weber. The German sociologist Max Weber has perhaps had a stronger influence on Western sociology than any other single individual. He was a man of prodigious learning whose sociological investigations covered such diverse fields as politics, law, economics, music, cities and the major world religions. Throughout his adult life, Weber felt a great tension between his role as a scholar dispassionately observing society and his desire to influence events through political leadership. This tension may have contributed to a severe mental breakdown that incapacitated him for several years of his academic career. He viewed the direction of social change in industrial societies with distaste feeling that the world was being disenchanted by bureaucracy, by the cold rationality of petty experts who knew no value other than efficiency. So this was all about the sociologists that we discussed in this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Also do share your feedback in the comment section below and do let me know which sociologists do you want me to cover in the future videos. Thank you so much for watching.